www.renaltubulo.com. Today's topic is renal tubular interstitial diseases. The functional unit of the kidney is the nephron, and the nephron really can be comfortably divided into the glomerular and tubular entities because they tend to have very different diseases. But even though we divide them, it's important to remind ourselves that they are absolutely intimately interconnected. Let's talk about the two ways we want to talk about it. So whenever we're drawing our pyramid, which is a good architectural view of the glomerulus, remember we want to talk here about the radial arteries from which we get our afferent and our efferent arterial. And most of our pictures stop at that point. But remember that efferent arterial actually goes on and connects to several nephrons. So several nephrons are connected by any given efferent tubule. The second thing to remember is that efferent tubule supplies all of the complex proximal convoluted tubule, but when it goes down to the medulla, it takes this very vertical shape, which makes it the vasa recta. And we talk about that vasa recta, we can see as we descend down into the medulla, we're consuming oxygen all the way so that by the time it turns that hairpin loop, we can see that it's got actually quite a low oxygen level coming back. But these two branches of the arterial are so intimately connected that they exchange O2 levels. And what this means is that when we're in the inner cortex and by the medulla here, where we're in the thick ascending limb and the distal proximal convoluted tubule, I'm sorry, the distal proximal convoluted tubule, this has a low PO2. So not only does a single arterial supply several nephrons, we see that the architecture of the vasa recta means that the distal proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule, in fact, have a deoxygenated blood supply. You take that together with the fact that we have a very high osmolality here, and that then makes them very susceptible to hypoxic injury. So anytime we talk about the loss of tubules, a loss of tubule means because you can't filter, you also get a loss of filtration. Similarly, any time you get a loss of glomeruli, because of the blood supply coming through the glomerulus, you inevitably get a loss of tubules. So even though we separate those two by pathology, where we think of the glomerulus as being functionally immune injury, and we think of the tubules as being hypoxic and toxic injury, in fact, we can see they're intimately related. There are two fundamentally important tubular injuries. There is acute kidney injury and acute tubular necrosis, and there's acute pyelonephritis, and those are the two diseases we want to spend our time thinking about. So let's start with acute kidney injury, summarized usually as AKI. Back in the day, this used to be called acute renal failure. And we're moving away from that term now, because the kidney is vulnerable to many different types of injuries. An injury does not equate to failure. Failure then, of course, means that we're going through all of the lack of homeostasis, whereas injury is just a partial decompensation. So there are lots of insults to the tubule that give you a decrease in GFR, and in most of clinical medicine, that's going to be associated with an increase of our creatinine of greater than 50.